Yeah. Wow, that was that was a good breakdown. Yeah. I know that that's gonna benefit somebody, a lot of people actually. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Lil, as we um transition from there, I know it's so much we could touch on. Yeah. Um, but, but, yeah. but could we um transition into like when did you um get involved in like the moving business? Like job wise, not Okay. Yeah. Okay. Later on I went to a company and applied for a job. And the name of the company was I better not say. Okay. But it was a logistics company. And the company, uh, I started out at ground level with the company okay. as a stock clerk, forklift driver, that type of thing. And, and as years passed, I continued to get uh, uh, promoted. It was a majority of white uh, Caucasian people. Uh, the owner was, owners was white. It was four owners. And um, the majority of people that worked there was white. I don't think it was about four blacks as opposed to maybe 50 whites. Look at that ratio. Small company. And uh, through the years, I uh, got promoted and until I got promoted all the way to uh, manager. I started out managing one facility. And I ended up managing facilities in Richmond, Facility in North Carolina, facility at Virginia Beach, facility in Northern Virginia, and a facility in Roanoke, which encompass the entire state of Virginia uh, areas and North Carolina, up in North Carolina. And I was the um, manager of all those facilities and on the board of directors for the company. Wow. Yeah. And I was the only black that had ever set foot on the board of directors. <laughs> you know, I was thinking about that as company. you was talking about it. Yeah, of this company, it was unheard of. Wow. Yeah. I, as you were saying it, Mr. Lewis, I was thinking, I was like, I bet he was the first black person to yeah. do all in that company. The first and only. Wow. Because they eventually went bankrupt. I know I heard this, you know, a few times off camera, you know, we touched on it. But like prior to like the company going bankrupt and stuff, can you just tell the people like what were like some good things that you did like about the company, like stuff that you learned along the way? Okay. It was a, a I learned that you had to really work hard and you should never give up. I, I was the type that didn't complain about my work. I didn't complain about my pay. I just took my work really serious. I didn't ask for any raises. And I got a raise almost every year. I was, my money went up and up and up and up. And I never asked for a raise. I just, treated the company like it was my own. I treated my job like it was my own. Not like I was working for somebody else and I'm getting them rich and, and um, you know, I can't stand this job. I didn't complain. You know, I just gave it my best. And I think that uh, 
no matter whether someone is prejudiced or dislike you, if you give it your best, people cannot deny that. They cannot deny that you are a good employee, a model employee, and and they promote you. You just get promoted, you know. And um, I I like the fact that through my hard work I got promoted. You know, there was one time they put me in a very difficult situation. I was a a young lady that worked there. And any time they wanted to get someone fired, they sent the employee that they wanted fired to work under this young lady because she was always um, difficult, close to impossible to work with. Wow. And so they sent me up there. First day. <laughs> First, this, this, the owner came to me and said, I, I have a building that I would like for you to go and work in. And he said, it's, it's a mess. I'm having all kinds of problems in this building. And the first thing that crossed my mind was, oh, Lord, they're getting ready to fire me. Because everybody that went to that building was fired. And... Um, I said, oh. he said, I'll give you X number of dollars on the hour raise. I mean, the money sounds good, but how long was I going to be getting it? You know? Yeah. And so I finally uh, agreed to go. Okay. And when I stepped into the job, he took me up there and told me what I was going to have to do. It was a monumental task. I mean, you would look at it and say, oh man, this is, this is, this can't be done. But I didn't have that mindset. I, it was a challenge for me. I said, everybody else has failed at this. I got to succeed. And I went in and in a year's time had turned that place around. And the per and the lady that was getting everybody else fired. Yeah. She got fired while I was there. <laughs> and they gave me the manager's job. There. That's the way it be. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know. Wow. Unbelievable. I it just I mean, you know, it was it was a time to just reflect and say. You know, God is really at work, you know, because only God could have uh, caused this to happen. Yeah, that orchestration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. And um, that was, you know, just unbelievable and a growth thing for me, you know, letting me know that you can overcome all of the odds of the world and any fiery dot that Satan might throw at you. You know what I mean? Because I believe in the scripture that says this, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities that uh, sits in high places, the rulers of darkness. And that was what was happening at that time. And God came in and showed me that, look, you can overcome anything if you trust me and just go to work, you know. That's blessed. And eventually, the company became bankrupt. It happened when the main owner and his brother, they were co-owners were working, they were the only ones left. It started out with four, two died out. Two owners. Two owners died out, and they were the only ones left. And um, 
they couldn't get along. The, the one that was the most knowledgeable said, either you going to quit or I am going to quit. So the one that was less knowledgeable brought out the one who was more knowledgeable. And that was the fall of the company.